A new study reports that ultra-processed foods have lower glycemic indexes and glycemic loads than minimally processed foods. So what does that mean? Does that mean they're healthy because they have a low glycemic index? Or does it mean we should just throw out the glycemic index because it doesn't track with ultra-processing? Interesting conclusions that we have to get into to see what we can really make of this study. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this study was published in abstract form in Current Developments in Nutrition. It's called Ultra Processed Foods Have a Lower Glycemic Index and Load Compared to Minimally Processed Foods. And what they did, I mean, as they set up this study, they're basically saying how ultra processed foods have kind of taken over and become more than 50% of the calories from the U.S. diet and, and other sort of industrialized countries' diets, which is not a good thing. And we have the you know recent Kevin Hall study and his colleagues back in 2019 showing that people who were randomized to the ultra processed or the highly processed um, foods ate over 500 calories more than those on the lower process. And they tried to match them for um, carb content and sugar content and protein content and all that. It wasn't perfect, but they did a pretty good job of trying to do that. So there's something about the ultra processed foods that seem to stimulate overeating. But they laid out their hypothesis um, in this in this abstract, saying it was hypothesized that glycemic index and gly- glycemic load would be lowest in minimally processed foods compared to processed and ultra processed foods for all food items and food groups. And what they found was exactly the opposite. So what they did was they looked at healthy volunteers. So there's the first thing, right? Healthy volunteers. And the way you measure glycemic index and glycemic load is the glucose response. Um, to the foods that you're eating, basically. Um, And they had over 2,000 food items um, collected from published sources, and they were coded based on the NOVA classification for processing. So it's the most commonly used from minimally processed to ultra-processed or highly processed. And they separated them into eight groups, beverages, beans, nuts, and seeds, dairy, fats and sweets, fruits and fruit juices, grains, meat, poultry, and fish, and vegetables. Okay. And what did they find, right? Let's get down to the meat. What did they find? The meat, so to speak. Well, they actually found the opposite of what their hypothesis suggested. They found that the looking at the ultra processed foods, they had a lower glycemic index and glycemic load compared to the minimally processed foods. So why is that? Now the question is, once they found the, the evidence that was contrary to what they believe, why is that? But actually, first, a little more detail about what they found, because it wasn't true across all food groups. Like on average, that's the trend, that's the direction that they saw. But for like the beans, nuts, and seeds, the ultra-processed food had a higher glycemic index than the minimally processed foods. But for grains, it was significantly lower. Right, so what do you do with grains when you process them? Something you know can add fat to them, right? So you're adding calories in fat, but you're also sort of quote unquote diluting out the carbs in a way, and you can slow the absorption of the carbs and the glucose response and all that. So you you can see how adding fat to to a grain is going to lower the glycemic index. But here's the thing: is that a good thing? Is that healthy? Because really what you're doing is you're increasing the energy density, you're increasing the total calories, you're probably increasing the palatability of the food. So it's clear that glycemic index isn't everything, right? So you could interpret this and saying, hey, you lower the glycemic index, that's a good thing. Well, not really, right? Not if you're combining carbs and fat into a processed product that might lower the glycemic index, but again, increase the energy density and increase the total number of calories eaten. Um, So that's something that we really need to consider when interpreting this study. So one thing it does do is sort of separate the the dangers or the unhealthy aspects of ultra-processed foods from glycemic index. Now, it's true, they're going, most ultra-processed foods have a good amount of sugar in them, but they're also combined in different ways, right? We've talked to uh, Michael Moss on our podcast, um, uh, who talks about the bliss point and, and about all the research being done by the packaged food companies, the processed food companies, to find the right mix, right? It's not just all carbs. It's carbs plus fat plus salt, you know, with the sugar, all that mixed together, which again could lower the glycemic index, but increase the palatability, increase the energy density. Now, the other thing is um, different people are going to react differently to foods of different glycemic index content, right? And or, or ratings. And some people are going to be triggered more by higher sugar, 
higher glycemic index foods, some people are going to be triggered less. People with insulin resistance may respond differently, right? There, there's not like the one size fits all when it comes to this. But what I think is important is to recognize that glycemic index is not the end all be all. There are plenty of studies that show um, that glycemic index is not the main predictor of overeating or of type 2 diabetes, but it depends on the population you're studying. It depends on what the exact foods are and the combinations are. I mean, something like watermelon, right, has a high glycemic index, but it's a really low energy density food. And it can be hard for some people to overeat watermelon because there's so much water and so much volume. Um, and you could get full, which is very different from like a shortbread cookie, right, or a bag of potato chips or something. Um, which may have a lower glycemic index, but so much easier to overeat and overeat calories. So I guess the point of, of covering this in this video is just to point out that um, glycemic index is not the end-all be-all. We have to think of other factors, energy density, total calories, palatability, and highly processing being some of those other factors. And that's why a diet doctor, you know, now that we're working on improving our satiety score and putting out lots of um, information about satiety per calorie and higher satiety eating. We want to help people start to think about these things and focus on these things to realize that focusing on higher protein, lower energy density, lower processed foods with what we call lower hedonic score um, is, is really a great way to eat to help feel naturally full and get all the nutrition you need. And it's that hedonic score, that combination of carbs and fat, you know, the, the highly processing, that hedonic score can really drive down the satiety score because it makes you frequently want to eat more and more. So check out dietdoctor.com, check out our higher satiety eating content. Um, you may find it's a good fit for you and it kind of goes along with the findings of the study in a degree. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.